On this video, we are going to discuss a little bit of English grammar. So this kind of video can be opportunity for you to learn and also to make a review. So the, the so the title is you are going to talk, talk about conditional sentence. So conditional sentence, conditional sentence is a very important way of speaking English. It is like a, one of the basic. I mean, you cannot escape if you are fluent in English. You cannot you are, you are, you cannot survive to a certain level without knowing this kind of trick. They are very easy, but you have to do exercise. They are like calculus. Calculus engineering, uh, music theory. When you want, you, when you learn how to play the guitar, you learn that it's very sometimes it's very boring. But believe me, it's very useful for you to learn and for for you to keep your fluency in uh, in, uh, in in the language. So the conditional sentence, the, the conditional conditional sentence is is produced by the if if is a is a is a if is a is a key. Is a key, uh, let's say a key, key a key word in the is a conjunction. Sometimes you can make a mistake, say that it's a preposition, but I think it's not a very bad mistake. It can it can be a problem to remember it's a preposition or a conjunction, but it's a conjunction according to the grammatical rule. You have to use a clause and you have to use a sentence. Then you in, the, in the end have a conditional sentence that which is a sense that you use in general to talk about something that he, let's say, is hypothetical or a kind of conditional suggest when you're doing a contract with uh, if someone, the people say, they, yes, they, they just that they, they would say like that, I'm just going to do that if you do that. So it's a kind of conditional. It's very common computer science. If you are a computer scientist, computer is based on if. That's so that the keyword of computer program is if. If is one of the the let's say you cannot make computer program without if and most of artificial intelligence is uh, such as fuzz system they use this kind of, of trick so in our life you use it a lot as a, as a living day by day so it's more than natural that one of the most important grammar structure is based on if so they I mean again the, this rule here should be taken with care. They, 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 they are just like a kind of a, a kind of a summary of the history. So, if, if you are fluent and you, if, or if you want to be fluent, you have to be flexible. So this is the one that can help you to survive, but not the whole story. The whole story is much more complicated. So they can be, they can, they can, they can be used in the present, in the present, the present, in general, in general, not always, but you can uh, in the spoken English. This always except this is the grammar. Let's say the the classroom like uh, structure of the of the sentence. So in general, it is it is used to talk about the possible future situation. So if you are talking about a possibility of in the future, so that is in general that what you use. But in general, people uh, the, the, does not use the the future. In general, they use the present with the present. It's not completely wrong, but it's not completely right according to the grammar. So according to the grammar, have to use the future. So it is a so let's say an example here. If it does rain, I go to the beach. So if it does rain, so it's a condition. So if it does rain. Uh, so if it does rain, it's a uh, it's a uh, the condition that you impose. So if it rain, you not go to the beach. So that the two different sense. So you can say in two way. You can say like like this: If it does rain, I go to the beach. Or if it were rain, I will not go to the beach. So they are like uh, complementary, supplementary of each other. They are two different sense. So all of them say the same thing. They say that uh, you you apply a condition. But of course, in real life, it's just a computer. So if you are making an artificial intelligence computer that he, uh, should avoid to go to the water, it's a kind of shirt that you should use. But in life, maybe people can decide to go to the rain. If, if, it's, if, if it's rain, they decide to go to the beach. So humans are a bit more flexible than, than, than the language can express. So here you have the first, the present, so the, the, the main clause. The most important one is, is I mean, the close is is in the in the present, and it is in the future. The the consequence. So, uh, like another one, for example, if if you have a test tomorrow. 
So if you have a test tomorrow, you should stay at home. So it's a, it's a kind of such as your father, your mother, your parents trying to tell you that if you, let's say, they, 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 in this case, they, they don't know if you have a test tomorrow. They don't know. So it's a kind of condition. Or maybe you don't know. Maybe you, you are still waiting for the professor to let the, the professor to release uh, who, who failed the main examination. So you impose that condition. So if I have a test, or if somebody tell you, if you have a test tomorrow, you should stay at home, you should not go out, you should study. So that's a, a let's say, a condition and a consequence. So th this one is a little bit more, uh, let's say, I, uh, let's say imperative, that people call imperative, call me if you need anything. In general, the sense cannot be very polite. So people uh, say people like to make like to make like choose the should. Should you need and should you need anything? Please call me. So, but you know, it, I mean, if I, uh, if I talk to your friend, it's not a problem. But if I talk to a professor, uh, it's not wrong as well, but not very polite. But anyway, call me if you need anything. So in general, they use this kind of uh, this called mode of verb. So, uh, will, may, can, should, must, and the imperative. This last one is the example here, the imperative. So, uh, you create an imperative sentence, like, uh, uh, tell me if she comes here. Tell me if she comes here. So, remember that this the, uh, here is in the present, so you should conjugate the verb properly. So. Tell me if she comes here. Comes, it there's an S in the end, it's a conjugation of the verb to come. So pay attention that here you should conjugate the verb properly in the present. So we should remember the ending of the verb. You need. So, uh, so in, in, in case she needs, so we have to remember that, the conjugation. So that's, uh, so you see that here is a little, a little bit more advanced compared to the basic one. So the first one was a possibility was the present. The, the, the next one is in the past. So the past in general is to talk about ways that are not real, are hypothetical. They are like uh, possibilities. So if I had a car, I could give you a drive. So I don't have a car. So that's a possibility. So if I had a car, I could give you a ride. If I had a diploma, I could get a job. So that's a possibility. So in general, you apply the would, could, and might. The next one is the past. So this one was the past is the past perfect. So this one is, is quite similar. So in general, you use the mode of verb have. So if I had left home earlier, you wouldn't have arrived late. So this case in general used to show regret, like sadness, because uh, you arrived late because I was not able to to to, to leave early. And in this case, they express impossibility, sadness. So if I had a family, I would not live on the street. If I had a friend, I would be sad. So, gender case here is hypothetical and as well, but has to do with, uh, with, uh, with uh, let's say, with sadness, with something that you regret, that you have done that or somehow to a certain level and you regret that. So, that's called the, the, the another way of if. So, here it's just the basic. You can also find out all the sense, and also in the spoken English, people can decide not to use this one. Such as uh, this first one here, as I said before, people can generally use just the press. So uh, if I do, if it does rain, I I go to the beach. So I go is a present. So instead of so people in general will eliminate the will. So if I if it does rain, I go to the beach. So it uh, in this case it, uh, in this case you want to eliminate the the will. It is used a kind of law, a kind of truth. Like he, every day you do. So it's a kind of a decision. So you every day you go to the beach if it does if it does rain. So uh, this if here you use the kind of law, a kind of law of nature, a kind of rule that you apply. So let's say uh, if if there is no lion, the zebra comes out. So the zebra always comes out 
when there is no lion. So that's a kind of rule. So language can be complicated. You have to, uh, let's say, learn the, the grammar, but at the same time, have as well to have some kind of, uh, let's say, feeling of what's right or wrong. After you learn English for a while, you get the sense, even your own language, if you not speak English as native language, stop to think about it. You do not, you, you do not learn grammar, uh, let's say, when you are very young. So, but you still have the sense of rightness and wrongness. So that's the kind of sense that you have. So grammar is just important for you to have a kind of guidance, not the, the, the whole story.